Oh my goodness, Andrea, we just stepped inside. Carson just walked right through that door over in here. And now he's taking pictures with fans. Dress in your favorite superhero, your yeah. favorite. Yeah, right? Yeah. Your super favorite superhero stuff. And yes, and they're. Oh. And then we'll all be twins. <laughs> yeah. we'll Warhead police are warning Facebook users about a scam that's been circulating in inbox messages. It reported last night that nearly 20,000 people were signed up for this event. We just arrived to the scene. Uh, it looks like a lot of police activity. It's a quiet scene but it's still very active out here in West Fargo. To give you some sort of idea of how big this pond is, I'm going to have you take a look. It's about a football field wide, and dive crews are still searching for this this boy. And we, as you guys mentioned, it is now a recovery effort in order to find this young boy. Towards the other side of the pond, they have taken down the police tape, so we are fairly certain that they have located the general area of where the little boy is. Neighbors I spoke with earlier this evening say they are completely shaken up over what happened. And we are learning, Mike and Andrea, from city officials of West Fargo that this is a retention pond and that people are allowed to swim in it. But for the search and rescue efforts, they did turn off the pumps to make sure that they could execute the search in the best way possible. For now, reporting live in West Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. You can just feel the enthusiasm brewing. Guys, how excited are we to meet Carson? Right hand. Okay, let's get back on topic. <laughs> Humans, we've got a couple of furry friends that are looking for a great family. Mm. I'm just ecstatic because yesterday we were Big 12 champs, and then today we got the number one seed. And so. then like two weeks from now, you will lose in heartbreaking fashion. I will take you up on that. Still to come tonight, Justin will have another look at you. That's my line, by the way. <laughs> Grand Forks police have confirmed the woman who was found dead with her three children killed them and then took her own life. Valley News team's Ryan Laughlin was the first on scene this morning and he's been with the story all day. He's joining us live with the very latest. This might be literally one of the biggest final exams any student might have to take. The exam is to build a house and that's exactly what five students from Fargo North have been doing this school year. After months of not knowing, the Graywin family can hopefully have some peace of mind. They know the details of Savannah's death and that her killer will spend the rest of her life behind bars. Some will be more at peace than others regarding the judge's decision. It's a sentence of the court that the defendant be remanded to the Department of Corrections. Today is the first day I learned of how my daughter was murdered and how my granddaughter was taken from her. I am satisfied with this sentence. Norberta Graywin can breathe a sigh of relief tonight, but not all family members agree with the judge's decision. Brooke Cruz does not deserve to live. She shouldn't even been talking. She didn't have a reason to cry at all in court. I am guilty. Her cries mean nothing to me. Don't really have too much to say. I'd just like to thank everybody that came out to help search for Savannah, everybody that gave us support. But today, Ashton, the father of Hazley Joe, is reminded of hope. Our seven year anniversary is coming up on March 20th. And every day I'm reminded of her more and more because the every day she grows, she looks starting to look more like her mother. I miss Savannah so much. I've never put love into someone like I did her. It was also revealed in court today that Hazley Joe was given her Native American name, which translates into survivor. You may have also noticed a rather famous face with the Graywin family. That's famed attorney Gloria Allred. She says she was with the family as a supporter. However, when I asked her why we only saw her today, Here's what she had to say. What have you done specifically to help the family throughout the course of this investigation? I mean, this is the first time we're seeing you with the family since you announced your representation. Well, I'm just here to be supportive of them, whether it's being here or be available, being available to be a support person to them. She also added that today was not about her. And I looked at the map and I was this far away from North Dakota. Marietta did it, 90 degrees and celebrating her 91st birthday. She asked me to show her the ropes. First stop in Fargo. The toasted frog, that's cute. Fried cheesy pickles. <laughs> Here he comes, mm, very, very good. Now nobody in the right mind drinks wine like I do. Cheers, Fargo. Born in Italy, Marietta first came to the U.S. through Ellis Island when she was two with her family. My sister and I and my mother. From there, the stories go on. Marietta started keeping track of all the states she'd been to 
while traveling with her husband, who served in the Marines for 30 years. And that was the Marine Corps ball. Even doing two tours in Hawaii. Her advice after 91 years? Be happy, take things as they come. You know, I've had serious surgery and I said, there's nothing I can do about it. I can hit my head against that brick wall and it's not gonna change. So you might as well make the best of it. And I did. That mindset after a tough battle that she would win. I had breast cancer, yeah, 28 years ago. Today, she takes care of her husband who is handicapped, but she stays active, even volunteering at her community theater for 28 years. Costumes, you name it. Now, now I do concessions, I'm the, I'm the boss. A busy day for Marietta isn't complete without birthday ice cream for our final stop. Two scoops of butter baton with lots of nuts. That's big enough. Holy cows. Thank you. A sweet ending for a woman who just won't quit. It's been an interesting life. I can't complain. It might seem scary while on the bike, but when you get to know everyone, everyone's pretty lovable. Love. That's what brings this Fargo family together. We met uh, riding motorcycles. My husband Randy and I have lots of kids now. This family reunited by Tanner. He broke this right here. Even if Tanner did break some parts, his family knows him as much more. <laughs> Loving. Crazy, just, you know, he just was high on life. Selfless, always putting others before himself. Kind. Tanner had that impact on everybody he met. It's just comforting to have him here, even if it's like this. Tanner was 24 when he died after the motorcycle he was riding collided with a car at 45th Street South in Interstate 94 just one year ago. We were so split up for so long, and then when he passed away, it kind of came together. They're stamped on Scott's bike on a broken part he won't repair. So it's kind of a part of him. Tanner's family of nearly 100 motorcyclists rode in honor of his life. And a surprise for Tanner's mom and dad. Before he died, he was building another stunt bike that, of course, he uh, never finished. So a bunch of his close friends got it, and they finished it. Didn't need him to die to be proud of him, but I've never been more proud. Although not by blood, a family remembers a raging, revving spirit that became unified over one common interest. Riding off in the sunset, an empty beer bottle rests on Tanner's memorial. Love you, baby. Wish you were here. A Fargo family is having to find another place to stay tonight after fire and smoke filled their home this afternoon. It happened at 702 Second Street North about 115. The fire marshal says they were able to put out the fire in about 15 minutes. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Family members were home at the time, but were told they got out safely with no injuries. Damage is still being assessed on both the lower and upper floors of the home. The fire was contained to just that one home. Neighbors say they are happy the family is safe. If another driver backs into your car, you likely assume insurance will take care of it. But what happens when police won't meet with you because of your on your private property? And then the driver's insurance turns out to be fake. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovic looks into a whistleblower's complaint to see what happens next. Moorhead police tell us they can't comment since it's still an open investigation, but they were in contact with Halverson earlier today and say that they are working on it. It's feeling more like summer out there. Can we keep the quiet weather into this evening? For that, let's head on over to the Weather Center to find out. Robert? Hot one, but stormy weather to wrap up the day. Well, the details on that as well as a look at your entire seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Police are still searching for a man who pulled a knife on an employee at the Menards and Grand Forks. Authorities say a man filled his cart with items and then walked out of the store. Employees confronted the suspect who then pulled a knife and got into a getaway car. An at risk youth counselor at a Duluth facility is accused of trading contraband for sex acts with five teenagers. 28-year-old Mark Painter appeared in court Friday on felony charges of third-degree criminal sexual conduct. Bail is set at $150,000, and according to the complaint, Painter allegedly engaged in sex acts with five victims between the ages of 13 and 17 at the Hills Youth and Family Services over eight days this month. Sources say police learned of the allegations from youth who had run away from the facility. 
Juvenile residents overseen by Painter allege he had created a system in which sex acts were traded for cigarettes and tattoo ink. Painter was immediately removed from the facility and placed on leave. The officers involved in the deadly shooting of a black man in Minneapolis last month will not be charged in his death, according to the county prosecutor. This case has sparked demonstrations across the city that continue today as protesters took over a press conference held by the county attorney. Sarah Daloff has a story.